Good morning, everyone. Taya here from Quilting Delights, and we are ready to get started on marking and stitching down our feathers. So I just want to go through a couple of things um, as a review and uh, talk about the different marking tools that we have and the two different ways that you can mark these. So you can see that I have mine set up on a light table right now. This is the Caterpillar light table that I like to use. My husband uh, got it for his watercolor painting. He traces everything off and then watercolor paints it. But as you can see, I have um, borrowed it from him. He thinks that we're on a timeshare with this, but really I get more time and he does more sharing. I'm probably going to end up getting a second one because these tables are so cool. They're about a quarter inch thick and they come with a mat on top so you literally can rotary cut and there's a tempered glass that you can put on top so that you can iron right on the tempered glass. You can do everything you need to do with appliques on this table. We have the larger size ones coming in. This is January, so the larger size ones will be here by the end of the month. You can purchase a bag to go with it so that you can put your electronics in the front little pocket and keep them safe. So that's the light table. I want to talk about the feathers that we have. You can see here I have the blue one, but many of you have the teal and purple. There's a um, jewel tone, there's a green one, and there's a red and black one that I'm just loving. And I'll, I'll show you that here when we get into the stitching part of it. All right, let's review what we did. We um, cut out and ironed down our feathers and then the um, spine goes right on top and it gets laid down as well. Now we have to talk about marking these and a couple of things to know. First of all, remember that whenever you get into a project like this, it is absolutely critical and key that you prepare your fabric so that they don't shrink after we're all done. So we've Mary Ellen's best pressed ours. We're also um, putting a fusible fleece and yard debris, apparently, get rid of that. We're putting a fusible fleece on the back of our prepared fabric, and that's after we've put on the shape flex. So it's three layers, three layers of material. There's the fabric that we, we are working on, shape flex to stabilize the fabric, and then fusible fleece to add a little bit of loft and punch when we do our quilting. Now you can use other types of filler. What I will tell you though, and um, we're discovering this as we're working on our other five machine quilting revival projects, I thought, oh, I'll just, I had a scrap of warm and natural, which is 100% cotton batting. And I thought, well, I'll just use that in one of these projects and use it up because I like to use up my scraps. Well, guess what? The warm and natural has zero loft zero. It has no punch. So I started quilting and realized that my quilting was not going to come up off of the um, fabric and I wouldn't be able to see it. So I picked all that out and what I like um, for other kinds of projects, even these, is the 80-20, which is a 80% poly, I'm sorry, 80% cotton, 20% polyester. That's one of my favorites. I like wool as well. The only thing you have to be aware of with wool, especially on dark fabrics, is that it will tend to pill and pull to the top. So um, what I'm really left with that I like a lot is two layers of the fusible fleece, especially on a wall hanging because it will give it a little bit of stiffness, a little bit of body, so that it um, hangs well or hangs straight. And the 80-20 wool combination. And you'll see more of that as we work on some projects. Okay, so on this one we're using two layers of um, two layers of fusible fleece. One that's attached to the back of the project and one that's attached to the front of the project. So now we have to look at marking our quilt for stitching. <coughs> and the first thing we're going to do is um, look at the pattern, the template that we've given you. And you can see I have that taped down with our tack it down tape. And it is um, wonderful. It's a paper tape so it doesn't destroy or leave a residue anywhere. And it's easy to take off and it doesn't, um, doesn't hurt my paper. So tack it down tape. I'm going to start in one corner and work my way around. You do not have to lay it all down. If you don't have a light table, then put your um, quilt template, the paper quilt template, in a window that's going to get good direct light in the afternoon or in the morning 
and you can trace it off that way. Now you'll notice that I have uh, my feather in the middle. Well, how did I get it there? Well, I just lined it up with the uh, feather outline that we have, and it doesn't have to be perfect because remember, we're just laying these template um, designs down on the fabric as a um, placement for where we're going to do our ruler work first. So in any given situation, you're going to do all of your ruler work first and then your fills last. At least that's how I've um, had quite a bit of success doing that. So um, we're not going to stitch this today, but we are going to mark it because we have to layer everything together to start the stitching process on the feathers. We do want the feathers stitched through all the layers of fabric. So to get started here, um, I think if you remember from last time, I talked about two different pens that I like. One of them is the friction pen, and one of them is the water-soluble pen that is made by Ch uh, Chaco, it's C-H-A-K-O, Ace Fine Marker Blue, and that's water-soluble. Now, the difference, main difference between these two <clears throat> is that the water-soluble, you can iron on top of, and it still comes out. The problem with the friction pen is that once you iron it, I'm sorry, once you mark it, you can't put an iron on it without it going away. Now, even with that said, I will tell you that my option, uh, my favorite option is using the friction pen. But um, if you, for example, if you are more comfortable marking your project like this without the fusible fleece on the back, um, maybe you don't have a light table, maybe it's easier for you to just do it um, on a table. Well, this thinner without the fusible will allow you to mark it. So in that case, you would want to use the water soluble because then you could iron your fusible fleece on afterwards. So it's just personal preference. For this particular one, I'm going to use the friction pen because that's my preference. And we're just going to go through. And um, so for example, here, this is a swirl that is coming up out of the middle of two feathers and we are going to um, we are going to stitch those so I'm just going to kind of loosely mark where those go and then I'm going to um, just take a peek here and the nice part about the light table is that you can um, you can see everything that you need to see. Now these are going to mark these are going to line up when we actually get them stitched. I'm right on the label for the caterpillar. So you don't need to mark these exactly. We're just doing them for reference and then when we use our ruler, that's when they're going to get really sharp and nice. So I'm just marking these. Now, while I'm doing this, one of the things I want you to know is that we've actually made the fabric bigger than the 24 by 36 template that we're doing. And what does that mean for you? That means that you can get even more creative and make yours bigger if you want to, or you can stay within that 24 by 36. But if you wanted to make it bigger, for example, we would just turn this into a square and go ahead and take it on out to the outside edge. Remember, it's all in how you want it to be. And then this is going to go to the corner here. And this is going to go to the corner. This is a fun way to use squares and triangles together. It just makes a really, really cool design. So I'm going to go ahead and mark all of these. And again, if you want to make it bigger, just follow this design idea out to the outside corners. Okay. So we're going to mark the entire top. I'm not going to do that today because I want to show you how to do the feathers, but um, it's important for you to know that it has to be done before we stitch. So your next step in this wonderful quilting journey is going to be to mark your lines that we're going to stitch with the rulers, and then we'll come back in, you'll see in the next session, when we actually start stitching the backgrounds, we're going to come back in and start filling um, the blank spaces with some really cool fills. And that's going to be all free motion, um, so we'll show you that. But we're going to do our ruler work first. So your job today 
um, on this part of the project is to make sure that your feathers are down really well and then go in and mark all of these. Everything that's on your quilting template, except for the feather, of course, everything that's on your quilting template, you're going to go ahead and mark either with a friction pen or you're going to mark with the water soluble, making sure that you've got fusible fleece on the back when you're done and we get ready to start stitching. All right, we're going to take a short break here and get this marked, and then we'll be back and show you how to stitch the feathers down. Hi, everyone. We're back after marking our feather and getting ready to start stitching things down. And I want to just show you a couple of other ideas. Not all of you may want to do our style of quilting. Some of you will want to be creative and do your own style of quilting. And I had that notion as well. And um, this particular one, the black, red, and gray one, you can see how when you stitch the feathers down, it really punches that up and makes the feathers come to life a little bit more. The other thing that it does, and you'll see that in a second, is it keeps them from separating from your background. In addition, anytime you're gonna do background fills, like on this one, for example, I'm actually working on pebbles. Let me pull it over here so you can see. I'm working on pebbling the entire background. I thought that would be super easy, but just doing this much of the pebbling took me a little bit over two hours. So I know I've got probably another eight hours of pebbling. So I'm just taking it one section at a time. But if you don't have the feathers stitched down and you go to do your pebbling, um, it puckers and it pulls away. So it's really, really important that we get the appliques down before we start stitching. So this is one idea. I was working on this one at Christmas, and unfortunately, I don't know how it happened, um, but I actually got some chocolate spots on here. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened. So we're using grandmother's uh, spot remover. Margot, who's our videographer, um, just informed me that this will be coming to her house. I'm not sure that that's true, but we'll see what happens when I get it done. I'm hoping to have this one completely finished by the time we video the next class because I want to show you um, some fun ideas on how to put the binding on once we're all done. So this is an idea, and this is just all free motion. One of the things I want to talk about as well is what happens on the back. And um, the nature of free motion quilting is that sometimes you... Um, use a darker color on the back and it will pull to the front. So on this one, as much as I love this fabric and you can see how beautiful it is with the outline of the feather, I'm using a thread color that matches my background so that if it does by chance pull to the top, um, then you're not going to see that back color. On the blue and white one that we did, that was our original sample, we used dark blue on the back, and there are a couple of places, not, I mean, you have to be really up close to see it, but there are a couple of places where um, you can see just a hint of the blue that they used on the back. So even though it doesn't uh, match the back fabric, I like using um, the thread color that matches my background on the front. The other thing that it does is it shows um, just how imperfect my circles are, and I don't care. I care what it looks like on the front, not so much on the back. But it gives me room to practice and improve, so um, that's always a good thing. So I'll get this one done for you guys by the next class. And then I also wanted to show you an idea, and this is exactly why you want to stitch down your feathers before you put it all together. I thought, oh, I'll be so clever, and I'll... Um, mark all my lines and you can see when you look at this that if I didn't like a line I just I just uh, zigs I just crossed it out it doesn't matter because all of those lines are going to be gone by the time I'm finished with this but look what's happening because I didn't stitch these I didn't iron these down or stitch them down before I got started now they're starting to lift so the first thing what do you think the first thing I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to stitch these feathers down and then stitch the lines so you can see it as well. And I'll have these done by next month um, for the March 2022 class so you can see just how beautiful it is to do different kinds of quilting. I love the variety, and there's one other one I'm going to do that um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to finish it yet, but I'd like to do four different styles of quilting so you can see you don't always have to do um, one style. You can mix and match and um, dress them up any way you want. Uh, with this one... I marked the background first so that I could get an even, so when I cut this one, um, I'll start over again. Uh, I had a big piece of fabric 
and I knew I was going to do the cross hatching, but I needed to make it line up evenly inside the rectangle, and I wasn't sure how to do that. So what I did is I marked the whole thing, the background, I marked the whole thing, and then I cut the same distance. So I cut an inch around, all the way around on the lines, which centered it in the top. So now I added my borders, and when I quilt this, the quilting will be absolutely perfectly centered and the same distance on the sides as the top and bottom. It's going to be absolutely stunning. So I'll have this one ready to go. Um, the the uh, thing about this one is I have it completely quilted. Uh, the borders are quilted and the binding is on. So I keep deceiving myself into thinking it's done and it's not. So I have to do um, some more work on this one. Okay, let's get to the one that we are working on. So your job for February, your assignment, if you choose to accept it, is to get everything, get the feathers stitched down. And that means that you need to mark it and you need to stitch it. So here's what we're going to do. I've put dark blue thread in my machine and I'm using a number, I'm using a number 34 foot just because I like it. It's slick, I can see through it, and most importantly, it has a straight line down the middle so I know exactly where I'm headed. Okay, so I have put dark blue thread in my machine on both the top and the bottom, and I have a few things here that are uh, helpful tools that are gonna make it much easier for me to um, finish this up. So I'm gonna put some safety pins in just to kind of hold it, and Notice that I'm putting my safety pins in the same direction that I'm going to roll my fabric. So these are just placeholders. They just kind of hold on to the fabric. Now if you wanted to, if you were really, really unsure of making, you know, making certain that everything stayed down, you could spray baste the two layers together. That's always an option, but I just didn't find it necessary. The nice thing about fleece is it um, holds on to itself. So I'm just going to roll this in because it's gonna make it much easier for me. And just notice I'm flattening it out as I go. And because we're starting at the bottom and working our way up, we're not gonna have any issues with it shifting. But it is nice to use these blue or green clips on my fabric to kind of hold this all together on both ends. And I just, I love these. They're just the best thing ever. And I'll put a couple on each end and that way It'll hold on as I'm working. Okay, so we just want to make sure that we have a smooth, flat surface to start with. And it looks like this has shifted down. So I want to make sure, I'm going to re-roll it. I want to make sure that I don't short myself on batting. No, nope, actually I'm okay. Yep, I'm absolutely okay. Shouldn't you roll it from this end? No, because I'm going to start stitching here. Oh, got it. Yeah my um, quilting advisor <laughs> asking me questions about which direction I want to roll this. And if she were doing one, she would know. <laughs> I'm teasing. Margo's awesome. She's been um, instrumental in us being able to bring classes to you and projects to you during a time when we haven't been able to see all of you. So we have over 50 people joining us for this project. And we couldn't do that in a classroom setting, so I'm very happy to have Margo helping us. And she also films a lot and helps Claudia Donnell. That's how I met her. Um, Claudia just thinks the world of Margo. Aww. So one of these days I'll sit down and tell her the truth. <laughs> just teasing. Okay, I think Funny. we're ready. I think we're ready. All right, the hardest part is the first stitch, as you all know. So what we're gonna do, um, the tools that we're gonna use on our machine. Um, I have a seven series machine here and what's great about it is I can set the needle to stop in the down position. We're not doing free motion. You could do free motion, but I find that I like my stitches to be really even and consistent. And so I can do that with my feed dogs up and my needle stopping in the down position. So I'm just now setting that on my screen. 
On the 7 Series, we have what's called hover mode. You also have that if you have a Bernina 570, and I know many other brands of sewing machines have that hover mode as well. So you want to activate the hover mode because when we stop, we want the foot to come up just a little tiny bit, and then we can rotate our fabric to the next area that we're going to be stitching. The For those of you that don't have hover mode, um, the Berninas have what's called a freehand system, and it's a bar that fits in, it fits into your machine. So when you get to the end of where you're sewing and you need to turn, you just push the freehand system bar to the right and it will raise your foot so that you can have hands-free turning. So this is something that I want all of you to get really good at because being able to move and manipulate your fabric and still use a straight stitch without um, doing free motion is really important. The other thing that is important is that you always start with your um, thread up. So I'm going to drop my foot and I see where I can then see where my needle is positioned. I'm going to touch the needle up, needle down button twice and then raise my foot, come off and pull my thread to the top. If your bottom thread doesn't release immediately, just play with the um, hand wheel until it does and then you can reposition your um, foot so that it's exactly where you want it to start stitching. I'm going to put my needle in the down position because that's how I want to start and then I'm ready to go. Now this is a game. How many of you have ever peeled an apple or a potato and it's kind of fun to see how long you can stitch or how long you can peel with it still being all one piece. So that's kind of what we're doing here. There are a couple places on the feather where we will need to um, stop and start again, but for the most part, you can do this entire thing in about 10 um, thread starts and stops. So that's the game for today is to try and stitch these out without stopping. And I'm just gonna get started here and then Margo um, maybe Marco can add some music to this so that we can stitch in style and I'm just going to go so I'll show you this first part and then I'm I'm just going to start stitching. I'm going to go up one side and then I'm going to go down the other side and then the last thing I'm going to do is stitch down my feather. Um, I will say that uh, stitching down the feather along the edge still leaves a spot down the middle and you could if you wanted to I have not done it yet but you could run a decorative thread up the center of that spine just to add a little bit more flavor to it so um, it's whatever you want to do but I want to show you the process of stitching this and I do have my foot pedal plugged in I've got my threads um, both of my threads to the top and I'm going to start stitching oh do I have my feed dogs up yep Feed dogs are up, and here we go. This one I think is set. Oh, there's a trick for you. So we've talked um, several times about having the Teflon sheet down, and the problem is that um, the Teflon sheet is covering up my feed dog, so it can't feed through. So I'm going to take my... Um, Easy Glide pressing sheet off and we're going to try this again. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, let's try this again. So uh, the things we learn when we're teaching, I've always said I am, oh, I'm, I learn more when I teach than when I actually try and do it myself because I don't have any, I don't have any rules. And when I'm teaching, I like to teach you guys um, rules to make things easier and one of the rules is you have to have your feed dogs touching the back of your fabric in order for it to move forward. So we've removed our easy glide sheet and now we're going to start stitching and uh, Margo is going to make this very creative and fun for all of us. All right here we go. So I've pulled my thread to the top and both my top and bottom threads, my top thread and my bobbin thread are both under the foot and I'm holding on to it I will sew all of my threads away when I'm done, and so that's why it's really important for me not to have so many starts and stops. I want to have the fewest number of starts and stops possible, plus it's just kind of a game. Okay, so again, we're stopping with our needle in the down position, and off we go. Oh, so much better. It's amazing what happens when the fabric moves. And you want to notice that I'm going really slow, so if Margot speeds this up, for the sake of saving time, 
uh, don't sew that fast. You want to do this slowly and methodically so you can get really, really close to the edge. Okay, I've come to a point and my foot came up because I'm in hover mode and now literally I can just turn and start stitching back the other way. I do not have to worry about, I just have to worry about my sweater. And I'm just going to go to the turn and it hovers and then I can flip it around and do the next side of that feather. I love this. This is just so cool. And you'll learn that you want to get as close to the point as possible so that when you turn it's actually already starting the stitch on the way down. Okay, so now we're going to get down to the end here where it matches up with the spine. And I, I just pick a neutral color. Um, I picked a dark blue on this one because I know it's going to get dark blue at the top. Okay, I'm going to do one more stitch. Love that I can just do one stitch. Okay, you don't want to stitch into your spine. You want to stitch next to it on the lighter colored side. So now I'm just going up a couple of stitches and then oh, I just love this hover mode. It makes it so easy. So those of you that don't have hover mode, use your freehand system to do exactly the same thing. And so we're just going to stitch our way up one side and then stitch our way down the other. But you want to notice that we've got our quilt top marked. Everything is marked and there are going to be if I remember right, there are two or three places. Okay, I'm going to release this a little bit so that I can see where I'm headed. There are two or three places. In fact, there's one coming up on the next row where we're going to have to come back and do, I don't know if you can see it, but we're going to have to come back and do this little piece as a separate unit. Um, so we will have a thread break there. Okay, so I'm just going to stitch here and be quiet. I do tend to take one extra stitch um, and you see me reaching behind that's because at home I have a 580 that doesn't have hover mode so I'm constantly having to lift my foot manually. If I remember right from the several of these that I've done, um, it takes me about an hour to do this whole thing, but you could certainly do one side, take a break, and come back and do the other side. What's important is that you keep this tight so that your stitching is smooth. Remember, you don't have to stitch up the inside of this because we're going to pick that up when we do the um, feather, but I do like to take that one extra stitch. Nope, and I still didn't get it close enough, so I'm going to take one more. Don't be afraid to turn it back and get that extra stitch. You want to be as close to the spine as you can and then I'm just going to stitch up a couple more and then I'm going to rotate it and you can see that now I can move up to that next section and always keeping everything smooth as you go. Okay, so we're going to let you finish all of this and um, go back through and sew your threads away. What that means is you tie a little knot on the front side and you take a needle and you bury it. And you want to make sure that you're burying it far enough, especially if you're doing dark threads, that you don't see the threads through the top. So we're going to bury those to the back side. Okay. We'll just keep stitching here. The other thing to think about is if you are not sure of yourself on this yet, take some of your extra fabrics and cut some feathers and make a little miniature piece that you can practice on before you actually sew on your final one. I don't consider that I'm very good at this, but I sure do think that the effect of it looks great and makes all the difference in the world. And then don't forget that you're going to sew up the center of the feather as well. That's what you want to have done for February. 
this will be quite the project and then in March we're actually going to get serious about starting some quilting and in March we're going to do all of the ruler work and in April we're going to finish up with some free motion quilting and I've got some really fun practice projects for you to do on the free motion quilting. So watch your emails and now this one has just a little point I'm going to stitch right over it. Okay, so you can see it doesn't take very long at all to get through this, but look at the difference. It actually adds some texture, lays that piece down in the center of your project, and makes it absolutely a perfect, um, perfect situation for doing our quilting, which is coming up next. Okay, so you're all set for next month. This is your assignment for February. You're going to get your feathers uh, stitched down and then everything marked so that we can get started next month. I want to remind you to join our YouTube channel, subscribe, just go to youtube.com quilting delights and subscribe to our YouTube, cha YouTube channel so that you get all of our videos. We have several fun ones coming up. And just a reminder that you are invited. Please join us for the 2022 Machine Quilting Revival and our five amazing projects that we are going to be um, starting here in the next week or so. We're videotaping those segments and you will be surprised at how wonderful they turn out. So please join us. It is a great program for uh, continuing to practice your machine quilting and become experts. We'll see you soon. Thank you.